Hi all, this is the König from Canoe, and today I'd like to show you how you can use Open Dolphin to ease the migration path from Swing to JavaFX. What you see here on the left hand side is a Swing application, and it happens to be one that comes uh, the chips with Open Dolphin and it measures response times in uh, for Open Dolphin. So this is a client, and uh, there is a running server in the background. And we can, rec when we do a request, we see how many milliseconds it ta takes for one round trip. So that is a little bit beyond 20 milliseconds for one presentation model with uh, one attribute. And uh, along with this comes a JavaFX version of the very same application where we, can, where we have the exact same functionality. So we can uh, issue a request and we see how long it took to, um, for one server run chip. Well, let's see if we do, uh, if we request 10 presentation models with 10 attributes each, how that looks like. So we're still far below anything that a, that a user would recognize. Also, this, uh, the enabled state of this button goes to disabled as long as the request is underway. So you see it, it comes back very quickly, meaning that uh, you can hardly recognize that there's a server um, request at all. And here on the, the very same logic on the client side uh, with Swing. So if we go for 10 presentation models with 10 attributes and do a request, and then the first one also always took, uh, takes a little bit longer because of the HTTP overhead but then we are in the same ballpark again. Then you see how many presentation models are uh, known to the client and memory requirements and so on. So this is the um, pretty small um, client functionality and how does it look like in the client, this one and this one. And as you guess the idea is that there should only be uh, a, minimal, a minimal change um, when it comes to the logic. So here we go. Let's close it. And um, what you see in the in the Open Dolphin code, which is hosted on GitHub, you see the performance swing view and the performance view, which is written in uh, JavaFX. Now, if you if we compare these, go for compare file functionality in the IDE and then make this a little bit smaller for the sake of, of easier uh, view in the, on the web. Now here on the left hand side we have the swing view, on the right hand side we have the JavaFX view. And of course, uh, and this is the whole application, that's all it takes. There's, there are differences in the imports, but not so many. Um, then comes the, the actual view and where Swing has a frame and a panel and a grid layout. There JavaFX has a stage and a scene and a grid pane. But, uh, and of course the, the views are different, but not so much. I mean there is a little bit uh, change, a small change in each line, but that's mainly because of the layouting, how the layouting works. So for example, here in the Swing grid layout, we automatically know how many rows we have and what columns are, and we don't have to give it the exact row and column for every entry. But uh, here on the JavaFX side, we still have to do that. Maybe later that, uh, that will also read uh, exactly identical, but at the moment we see the difference. By the way, um, these methods that you see here are factory methods, and if you draw your all your um, all your controls from the factory methods, that's always good for a later change of the um, toolkit. So we have the labels and text fields, and that's pretty much all identical. That's that's only in the layouting and the placement. Everything else is almost identical. So this, for example, this label method constructs a, a J label in Swing, whereas this constructs an, um, a JavaFX label. Hmm. There you go. But here comes the interesting part. When it comes to the binding, such that the, 
the time of the input that we have, which is the, the time attribute of the input presentation model. Um, we bind this against the text the text property of the time um, text field. Right? This is how we do it in Swing. And in JavaFX, it reads the exact same way. There is no single change. So the, the whole wiring up of the user interface is identical at this point. From the simple binding, it is identical. Uh, even for more advanced ones, let's say we're adding a model store listener since we wanted to know how many um, presentation models are added to the client side on which ones are removed. Um, we'd like to store this in the user interface and in the store uh, field, the text property of the store field. Um, even this is identical on the Swing side and on the JavaFX side. Um, if we use OpenDorphin. So the, the main point to take away is the logic stays exactly the same. Your controller stays the same. Of course, the view changes, but not much. But the controller stays the same. Only how you hook up the controller may change a little. For example, in, Groovy, in um, Swing, we have the action performed hook whereas in JavaFX that's called on action. This is the change. But the, the content of what you do, of what you need to do, is exactly the same. It's unchanged. Same for action performed on the, on the sleep um, input. Right? So what should we do with the sleep? We set the sleep millis on the client connector. Set the sleep millis on the client connector. That's all the same. When hitting the request button, what happens when hitting, hitting the request button? What happens is almost the same. The only difference here is that in Swing we have an enabled property that we first set to false, and only when, it, when everything has happened we set enabled to true. Whereas in JavaFX there's a disabled property with the exact opposite logic, and uh, we have set this to true and later to false. That's all the difference. Right? And then same, we can also clear, and also the clear is, is the very same. And then in the end, how we deal with the sleep millis and so on, that's, uh, that's again identical. All the code that happens on the server uh, is not only unchanged, it is the exact same code. We are reusing the same code, no matter whether we have a Swing client or a JavaFX client, the code on the server side is identical not only equivalent, it is identical. So if you are in an, if you're having a Swing application and you'd like to prepare for the future, it is a good idea to first introduce OpenDolphin and then later do the change to, for example, JavaFX. Or if you're betting today on JavaFX, but you'd rather like to have the opportunity to fall back to Swing if need be, because you're not yet as convinced as we are, then using Open Dolphin as for a possible fallback uh, is also a possible strategy. I hope you're convinced uh, that Open Dolphin helps helps you for um, organizing your code in a way that it makes it easier to change your um, your windowing toolkit of choice later with um, without excessive costs. That's the point. There's always something to do, but if you have a clear factoring of your code, um, you're in the best position that you can possibly be. Thanks a lot for listening.